Good morning, Matthew. Good morning. Thanks for uh, meeting with me today. As I mentioned last week, uh, my name is Jackie. I use the pronouns she and her, and I'm the nurse practitioner here at the Toronto Family Health Centre. Last week, I sent you for a spirometry test to investigate possible causes for your persistent cough and shortness of breath. I arranged this appointment with you today to review the spirometry results together. Do you have any questions so far? I uh, just want to get the results, good or bad, and move forward. Yeah. Your spirometry results indicate that you have airflow limitation, which is not fully reversible. These results correlate with a diagnosis of COPD. Have you heard of COPD before, or do you know what the disease is? Oh no, I know what it is. My dad has COPD. This, uh, this isn't good. He's always sick. Uh, is that what I can expect from me now? Thanks for sharing uh, your father's diagnosis with me. I can imagine how hard it is to care for him and watching his health decline. Matthew, if you're agreeable to, I'd like to review with you what this diagnosis means for your health now and in the future. Would that be okay? Uh, yeah, yeah. And I do appreciate that this can feel scary, Matthew. So thank you for agreeing to review this. Now COPD or chronic obstructive pulmonary disease is a chronic condition of gradual airflow limitation and inflammation of the lungs, meaning it's a disease that progresses over time. And as you know with your father, it impacts the lungs and breathing. COPD is usually caused by smoking cigarettes, cannabis, or other substances such as vaping or using a hookah. Your spirometry tests showed that your airflow limitation is mild. Mild, okay, well that's not at least a positive. It can present in different ways for different people, including chronic coughing, wheezing, uh, shortness of breath, fatigue or tiredness, sputum or phlegm production, difficulty exercising, or an increase in lung infections like pneumonia. And in your case, you were noticing that um, you're having a cough that was worse in the mornings with clear and white sputum, and you've been experiencing more difficulty exercising in the gym. Please correct me if, if no, I'm No, that's all true. I just want to be able to get back to a somewhat normal routine if possible. Yeah. We'll go over a little bit of what you can expect, but also I'll go over some of the treatment options with you to help you improve your health and your daily quality of life. And given the mild nature of your COPD, I want to prescribe uh, for you an inhaled medication called Vensalin. Its medical name is Salbutamol, and you might have seen your father take it. It's usually in a blue colored inhaler. It's a short acting beta 2 adrenergic agonist, meaning it's going to act quickly to open up your airways and help you breathe. And I'm going to recommend that you take two inhalations four times a day to a max of eight puffs a day for, the, for that short-term relief of your shortness of breath. I can do that. That's good. And for the most part, this medication is well tolerated. So possible side effects can include tremors or handshaking, uh, tachycardia, or fast heartbeats. Sometimes that feels like your heart's skipping a beat. And proper technique is very important when using this medication. So once you pick it up from the pharmacy, I'm going to review with you how to use it properly. Okay, good, good. Excellent. I think this medication is going to help. The next step, Matthew, is to review other ways in which we treat patients with COPD. This usually begins with continuing to exercise uh, at least 150 minutes a week of moderate exercise and maintaining an active lifestyle. Weight loss can also help limit disease progression and should strive to be in the BMI range of about 18.5 to 24.9. I can refer you to a dietitian if you think you could use some extra help improving your diet. And lastly, the most important thing is to quit or reduce smoking, as well as avoid secondhand smoke. I want to ask, are you open to talking about this today? I knew this was coming and uh, I knew I'd have to quit. Uh, I've tried in the past. My wife has been on me to quit for a long time. I, it's hard to do, and I have to try. I, I, I have no choice this time. I have to make a more concerted effort to give it up. Yeah, for sure. I mean, there's significant data to support that smoking cessation actually helps to slow disease progression, improve symptom control, and actually reduce mortality. And I want to totally acknowledge how challenging this can be. And I want you to know that I'm here to support you in this process, both emotionally and medically as needed. I appreciate that. Um, I'll, I'll do whatever I have to do. I'll have to be more intense on quitting this time. Well, I'm glad you're thinking about it. Why don't we book an appointment next week so we can talk about this further, as well as some of the treatment options available. All right. I'm going to provide you with a booklet from Canadian Cancer Society called For Smokers Who Want to Quit, so you can review it with your family. And there's also a Smokers Helpline that you can contact for some additional information about quitting smoking. I'm going to give you both of those before you leave today, okay? Very good. I appreciate that. Great. 
Now, Matthew, I just wanted to say this disease is chronic and it doesn't necessarily have a cure, but treatment in the form of inhaled medications and quitting smoking can help change the natural history of the disease. It can help slow the disease progression and extend your life expectancy. You can still live a good quality of life. Okay, well, that's positive news. I'll take that. Some ways to stay healthy uh, include uh, having your annual influenza vaccination, as well as the pneumococcal vaccine. And both of these can help protect yourself against infections. And we could talk more about recognizing and treating flare-ups. We call those exacerbations. This early treatment of those flare-ups can help slow the progression of COPD. Okay, very good. We can definitely do that, definitely. Yeah. Great. And lastly, um, Due to the chronic nature of this disease, I also strongly recommend that you have a conversation with your family about your values and, and your wishes and what kind of health and personal care you may want in the event that you're no longer able to speak for yourself. This is called advanced care planning. And it doesn't mean that this is gonna happen to you in the near future, but it's always good to be prepared so others are aware of what kind of care you would want. Uh, you know, me and my wife have chatted about that in the past, but I guess we'll have to revisit that um, more seriously more seriously now, yeah. Okay. I know that we talked about a lot of things today. Uh, so along with your Ventolin prescription, I'm going to provide you with an advanced care planning booklet that you can look through on your own time when you're ready. And then we can talk about everything we talked about today further at your next appointment if you wish. Thank you. No problem, Matthew. For today, do you have any questions? I think that covers it for today. Uh, just have to process everything and, and uh, move forward. Absolutely. Feel free to give the clinic a call if you have any further questions or concerns, okay? Thank you. Okay.